Hey, this is Joseph Lebrecht, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of the PhoneGap desktop app along with the web browser development tools in order to test basic things in PhoneGap applications like layout, all your CSS, HTML, and anything that is JavaScript based. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is download the desktop app, and this is available for Mac or Windows. Now, the whole reason we're doing this is because the developer mobile app is no longer available on the Apple App Store. It's been removed and we have to just assume that it's not coming back. So if you were relying on that to test your application on a device, that's unfortunate. So what we're gonna need to do is find an alternate way of testing this stuff. And of course you could install something like Android Studio and go through setting up a VM and testing on there. However, if you want the basics, all you need to do is use instead the desktop app and your local web browser. So with the PhoneGap desktop app installed, you'll notice I don't have any applications here yet, no project folders. So what we're gonna want to do is create a new one by clicking this little plus button. And I wanna create a new PhoneGap project. Here we can choose from a number of different setups I'm just gonna use the basic Hello World template and hit Next. And here I can choose a path. So I have this project folder set up here. Let's select that. And then I give it a name. I'll just call this Browser Test. And you can of course give it a ID that is optional though and create project. Now PhoneGap's going to go ahead behind the scenes and use the command line interface to create a project for you. All right, so it's created our browser test project. It gives us the local path to that project. We can click on this and here are all the different files inside there. So we've got our hooks, our different platforms. So right now browser is the uh, what's in there and also a place for plugins and our most important www folder which contains all of our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In addition to this, you'll notice the server is running. You can always stop the server through these controls here. We can see now it's offline, and then we can start it up by clicking the little start button there. And it starts it up for us and lets us know the IP and also the port it's running on. So let's click on that. And there we go. It wants to store files, sure, why not? All right, so this is a PhoneGap app running in the browser. However, it doesn't look much like a device. This is Chrome I'm using, but you can do this in almost any modern web browser with developer tools embedded. So I'm gonna right click in Chrome and just choose inspect. And you'll see here I get my developer tools and right here is the option for the device toolbar. This is going to give me an emulation of a device. So right now it's responsive, but I can choose to do like an iPad, an iPhone X, whatever. I'm gonna do an iPhone 6, 7, 8. And you've got a lot of different options here in terms of your zoom, how you want to uh, do this here. So online, mid-tier mobile, low-end and offline. These are bandwidth emulation tools. And if you look at more options, you can show device frame. So now it actually looks like an iPhone. You can show media queries, rulers, add a device pixel ratio, device type, and so on. So what I'm gonna do here is actually go ahead and fit to window so we can see the whole thing. And this is pretty good. We can go ahead and click on stuff. Of course, nothing's gonna happen because we haven't actually written anything to, to occur when we click on it which is fine for this demonstration. I'm gonna pop over into Visual Studio Code and notice inside project, I have my browser test phone gap project. And in there I've got www where I've got things like my index.html. So to actually edit and create a phone gap project, you just edit all of your HTML, your JavaScript, and your CSS from right in here. You can of course add local libraries, add images and so forth. I'm going to just edit my HTML. 
So here it'll say connecting to device, and then when the device is ready, it'll say this. I'm gonna change this to just say, let's go. And then once I save this, and pop back over into my web browser, you'll notice it reinitializes and now it says, let's go. So if you are targeting Android, of course you can still use the developer mobile app. However, if you are targeting iOS, this is a really good option for developing your app. Now, with the understanding that anything that you do is going to be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript based, only the stuff that works inside of the browser. If you're trying to use any sort of core plugins for an actual device hardware, you're not gonna be able to do that and test it within the browser. In that case, you'd have to test it in something like Android Studio or go ahead and get a developer license for Apple and be able to test it on your device that way. But most people probably don't wanna do that, especially when they're first starting out. So I hope this is helpful and hopefully Apple changes their mind someday.